Um, so we're about to begin our afternoon sessions. Uh, the first uh, uh, two 25 minutes we'll be talking a little about the Pebble software and then after that we'll prepare presentations by a number of uh, attendees. So um, just uh, uh, quickly, uh, how many people have got working hardware? Okay, brief number. Has anyone uh, ha whose hardware is not working yet? Sure. Oh, Mark. Uh, uh, just, so just, just one, or, one or two? Just give him mine. Not yeah. finished yet. Just okay. Yeah. Well, we're here. We're here all week, and we'll, uh, we'll make sure that everyone goes home with working hardware. Um, this has been, um, I think, the biggest mini conf we've had in terms of sheer number, amount of hardware and people, and it's gone, well, I think, smoother than it's ever gone. So that's awesome. Uh, we don't. We, we've normally not had time to cover software, so today's uh, unusual. We're going to be, get to do that a bit, but it's going to be a bit like the um, the hardware session. It's not possible to show you a set of slides, and from that, that you can just go and use an Arduino ID and, and, and program it if you've not, never done this before. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll uh, ask our helpers to um, help anyone uh, install their ID who, who has problems. Um, so. Uh, have a go yourself, but if you have problems, we'll get our helpers to do it. I'm not going to try and uh, show you by slides, because it usually ends up being a problem like a USB drive or something weird. Okay, so the Pebble, Pebble hardware and software. Um, so it should have something that looks a bit like this. Uh, this one here has a, is just running off battery. So if you get a, go to Dick Smith, or actually not Dick Smith anymore, J Car or somewhere, because um, they still sell parts. You can just run it off battery and uh, it, should, it should fire up with a display and so on. So this is what we're, this is what we're aiming for. This one also has a Nintendo touch screen. I and mean, you can get those uh, online pretty cheaply from places like Deal Extreme and so on for about $3 or a little bit more from SparkFun. So this is the list of hardware that's on this device. And uh, Luke, who uh, has put a lot of effort into designing uh, hardware for a hackerspace, um, has done a wonderful job with um, the help of Mark and John. Um, and if, uh, we can always ask him later for more details about the hardware. But in short, this is what's here. And uh, uh, the, uh, the, the touch panel and the um, ZB mesh networking, which is this small chip up here, is optional. So a $25 part you can get from uh, uh, SparkFun. You need two, one for the Pebble and one for, your, one for your computer if you want to do some mesh wireless uh, networking. So. Uh, if, if, uh, what, so what I'll do is, uh, this, is, this part's for people who aren't familiar with uh, Arduinos. So the website is arduino.cc. That's where you go to, to download the uh, IDE. Um, there's uh, great reference materials on there that tell you um, ha how the Arduino C language differs a little bit from, from normal C, just additional macros and functions and things, and also has lots of libraries. There's a playground of uh, tons of examples and tutorials. It's a pretty rich resource. Another excellent resource is a, 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 a local fellow, John Boxall, has um, known as Tronic Stuff. He has a fantastic set of Arduino tutorials, so there's a, a wealth of stuff out there. So. Um, how many, is, uh, how many people have got their ID downloaded, downloaded and working? So, quite a few. So, anyone, anyone, anyone who hasn't? Yeah, okay. So, about maybe, maybe t uh, 10 or so. So, please grab a, grab a helper uh, and have, uh, to help you get that you know, going before the end of the day. Um, and also, there's a number of some, you know, in, you know, in obviously in apartments, where we'll, we'll probably do some um, birds of a fair session or something else like that to help people throughout the week. So, make sure you're up on programming. Um, right, so it's, if you're familiar with C, um, you'll find that, you know, no trouble to program your Arduino. And even if you're not familiar with C, it's really just a matter of um, uh, calling a few functions to uh, write, write to the output pins, read from the input pins, and uh, make some si simple if, you know, if decisions, a few for loops. So it's, uh, you can do some uh, interesting things fairly easily. Uh, the Arduino provides additional macros to make it easy, so um, rather than having to deal with um, uh, uh, sort of a concept almost like assembler where you're sort of um, having to do ands and ors and uh, read uh, to change the pins. You can make, just call functions like digital read, digital write, analog, analog read, analog write to talk to the pins and just give the, the pin number you want to talk to. Um, you know, it might be pin 13 to flash the LED uh, or it might be uh, analog pin 0 to uh, read the temperature sensor and then you can just do a little bit of logic around, uh, around whatever value you've written. written. And there's an absolute stack of libraries, so uh, Google is your friend here. You can pretty much just uh, Google Ar Arduino and temperature or Arduino and uh, L L uh, LCD and you'll find a stack of examples. And the other nice thing about this is if you, um, once you've got this environment going, you'll be able to program your Leo, your, uh, Leo stick. The, um, this, this device looks like an Arduino Uno. 
The uh, Leo stick looks like something called uh, the uh, Arduino Leonardo, and uh, people can help you change, uh, just make the small mod to your environment so that um, you can program your Leo stick. So, uh, the hello world of the uh, Arduino world is uh, getting, getting uh, LED 13 to flash. So, um, basically, uh, there's a, a sketch called Blink. Uh, in the Arduino world, uh, programs are called Sketches, it's a bit weird, and uh, daughter boards are called Shields. Um, I guess you know, crazy Italians. And uh, so what you, have, what you do is you basically bring up the Arduino IDE, you uh, go to the menu um, and say that you've got an Arduino Uno in this case. But, uh, you then go to the menu and say uh, serial port. So on, on Linux it's going to look like a dev uh, TDY USB 0 or something like that. And on the Mac it's definitely a USB modem FD131. Uh, then you just go, go to the examples and there's an absolute stack of examples, there's uh, dozens and dozens of them and uh, this Pebble we've built today is just a standard Arduino with a bunch of hardware already attached to it and so uh, with the exception of the um, LCD which we've, we, um, we did a little bit of a custom hardware thing there because the LCDs take a lot of pins, about uh, six or seven pins and we didn't have that many spare pins so we basically use a shift register that only uses three pins. So for the LCD we need a bit of a custom, uh, our own custom library, but all the other hardware you can pretty much use directly. Um, so once you've um, gone and uh, load up Blink, you then just uh, uh, use the uh, file upload, and which is also, there's also a button on the, on the ID for, I think it's like a little right arrow these days. And then um, uh, lights should flash and then, then it's blinking. Uh, and that's, uh, that's pretty much the, uh, the process for all, all Arduino sketches. So I'll run through that a little bit later. Okay, so software for the um, for this this device. Um, turn off; it's getting a bit heavy. Ah. Uh, you can write s small standalone programs for each piece of hardware on, on, on the Pebble. So you could just write something that gets the temperature value and writes up to the serial port to your PC. Or you could uh, have a, a message come from your PC to uh, change the, uh, to, to write something to the display. You know, if you're a system admin, you might want to have, have a, the display somewhere convenient to you with the status of your systems. So you can write, write these little standalone programs, and pr that's pretty simple. Um, and what you'll see that the Arduino community does a lot of this, and they use delay loops, and so they might say, oh, I want to read the temperature value every, every second, so I'll Read the, read the temperature value, delay for a second, read it again, and so on. And that's, that's fine for simple things, but the Pebble's got quite a bit of hardware on there, probably about you know, six or seven things, and these all have different timing requirements. And by that I mean you might want to read the temperature sensor once a second, you may want to read the display ten times a second. The little rotary encoder, that little uh, knob that you can turn, that needs to be read about somewhere between a thousand and ten thousand times a second. So if you're trying to interleave all this code and do delay loops, that's just not going to not going to work for you. So uh, certainly encourage everyone to start by writing simple little sketches to exercise your hardware. And we'll talk a bit, a bit about that later. But uh, at, some, but at, um, at some stage, you'll need to do something that's a bit more event driven. And there's uh, quite a few libraries out there for doing doing this. The the one with, uh, one I and a few other people developed over time is simply called ICO and uh, basically what it does is it uh, divides your program up into a set of handlers which are just simple C functions, you know, one, a function for each uh, a sensor or actuator on, on, your, on your pebble and then uh, it basically has an event loop that just simply calls these things so you simply say I want this handler to happen 10 times a second or this one to happen 100 times a second so it's a simple notion that just gets us away from delay loops that prevents uh, code from being modular and, uh, and, work and workable. So uh, the basic approach is um, you, to download the ICO library, I'll talk about it in a sec, download the uh, Pebble application, test application, start the ID, open the sketch and hit upload, just like you would for Blink. Just, uh, okay. So to, to get the software for your Pebble, um, so stop your IDE. Uh, I hope hopefully everyone's got Git, but if not you'll have to install Git. And then um, the uh, Arduino uh, stores all your sketches in a directory called Sketch. Uh, uh, might be Sketchbook or it might be something else. But if you go to if you go to the Arduino Preferences um, tab, so just go to File Preferences, it'll show you the location of your of your Sketchbook directory. And uh, there's uh, so the starting point for this is, is all, your, all your sketches that you write, you, you, you blink and, 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 and so on, they go into um, the sketchbook directory, but in, in, uh, you can also have a, direct, a subdirectory called libraries, and uh, that's where you put uh, additional libraries, like it might be something to drive the LCD, or it might be uh, yeah, uh, something to um, uh, do the rotary encoder. Um, and so into that we just basically use git to clone the uh, ICO library from that, from that URL. So by, by simply uh, 
pulling, uh, getting uh, Ico Arduino Git into that, into that directory, that gives you the library. Then you can uh, go back to the sketchbook and uh, then clone the uh, Ico Pebble code. So um, after, after this I'll, I'll put this um, a, a presentation online and we'll update the um, Arduino miniconf.org, so apologies for not having done that a bit sooner. And uh, we'll, I'll probably just mail it to LCA chat so you can grab that. So um, is everyone who wants these uh, URLs, have you, has anyone grabbed them now? Just if, does anyone want, anyone want a few, another minute to um, grab these before we move on? Oh, if, you, if you want to back, I'll just, I'll just come back to this slide and get them again later. Andy, uh, yep. It's worth mentioning that you don't actually need to install GitHub. You can download as a zip archive straight from GitHub. Okay, cool. So if you just go oh, to sure, yeah. github.com slash gitstable.com. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, what, what, what John's saying is um, GitHub uh, pr provides uh, all the code as a, a ready archive. Ah, this guy's got the, got the idea. Just take a, take a photo of your camera. Um, I'll try, I'll, try, I'll, try and, I'll try and smile. Um, so what John's saying is you just go to GitHub and just download a, a Taji zip or a zip and you don't have to worry about Git. Um, I'll show, we'll do that, I'll show that a bit later. Okay, so once, the, once you've done uh, the two Git clones or, 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 da or downloaded the archives and unzipped them, you can just go to, you, to File Sketchbook and you should see a new um, sketch there called uh, Ico Pebble V2. And when you open that up, you'll see there's multiple, multiple tabs, not just, not just one tab. And there'll be a, a tab for the, the main program, uh, Ico Pebble V2, uh, which uh, has all the event handlers uh, set up. There's a .h file. The .h file has all the, uh, the pin numbers for the, the various pieces of hardware. So it says what pins the LCD are on, is on, what, what pins the um, light sensor and temperature sensor are on. And then there's individual tabs for each, um, each device. So basically we've broken it into, so there's a, a tab for the LCD, a tab for the light sensor and so on. And what you can do is if you don't want to dive into ICO straight away, what you can do is you can extract that code and just write your own simple sketches to exercise each piece of hardware. That's, that's, that's often a nice way to start. You can just look at the, um, the temperature tab and go, oh, there's the code for reading the temperature sensor. Pull that into your own simple sketch and yeah, have a ball. And uh, so once, once you've uh, loaded the sketch, you can just hit upload. Right. Um, so what I'll do is um, I'll, I'll pause there, and I'll we'll, we'll do it, and I'll do, do it, uh, in the next session do a quick uh, software walkthrough. Just look at checking the time. So it's 1:40 now. So I've got another five minutes. So I'll just quickly uh, go through that in, you know, in uh, for, for real, basically. So what have we got here? Need a uh, got a browser somewhere? Uh, not that one. Oh yeah. Okay. Right. So if you go to GitHub, you'll see um, at the top is uh, Ico Pebble V2, that's the application, and then beneath that is uh, Ico Arduino. So you can just click on Ico Arduino, and uh, if, there's any, if anyone wants to say no anything nasty about the presentation, now's the time to tweet because it'll appear on the screen. So go for it. <laughs> there we go. My bus. Oh, it's all right. It's not about us. Yeah, so go, go crazy, people. Um, right, so when you click on, on the uh, Git, Git repository, you'll see there's a, a Git read-only URL, so you can just cut and paste that. And as John was pointing out, you can also just click, click here to download the, download the zip file, if you don't. Okay, cool. And look, uh, uh, please don't, don't all sit there quiet. Just uh, If some, someone's got a better idea, just, just blurt it out. Um, I'm cool with that. So that, that's the that's the uh, uh, the library, and then same same deal for the um, Ico Pebble V2, and uh, you can just go grab that there. So um, I've I've already um, I've already got this on my machine, obviously. Um, right. So where's, where's where's the IDE? It's around here somewhere. Oh, actually, maybe it's not maybe it's not started. Uh, code, here we go. Right. Right. So there's the, there's the Arduino IDE. And uh, I'll just connect, connect the pebble. So, Freetronics um, kindly uh, provided a USB cable in the kit, which is uh, very handy. So um, once once you've uh, once you've uh, downloaded the library and the, uh, the application, you should just be able to then go to file. Oh, sorry, the other thing I'll quickly show you is if you go to Arduino preferences, 
that tells you the location of the that's the sketchbook location. So on my machine, it just happens to be in Documents Play Arduino. That's where I put it. That's, so that's how you can find out where, where to um, uh, to uh, unarchive the uh, the library in the application. And then when you when you bring when you uh, go file sketchbook, you'll see. Actually, I think what I should do is before I get into this, I'll just show you Blink if if, if no one's ever seen this before. If you go file examples, you go to basics. And there's Blink, and there's that's the Blink code. It's um, Arduino code is um, fairly simple and fairly consistent. You have a, a setup function, and the setup function usually um, initializes the serial uh, console if you want to use that. So the serial uh, input output, and then you also might set up any pins to say pin 13, which is the uh, the green LED. You say it's an output pin, and then there's a loop. So the setup function is called once, and the loop function is called um, uh, uh, indefinite, uh, again and again, forever after that, and you can see, we can see in the loop function it's basically uh, writing to pin 13, saying set it high, delaying for a second, then it's uh, setting it low, delaying for a second. So that's all it's required to, to you know, say hello world in Arduino. So, on um, so but getting back to ICO again, once once you've um, uh, loaded up, and you basically go file sketchbook and there it is uh, Ico Pebble. Um, hopefully you won't have to wade through so many uh, Arduino applications. And then uh, you'll, you'll get all these tabs and then it's simply a matter of just uh, hit it going either file upload or just going or just hitting this little round button here which is a little bit more convenient. And uh, this, is what it should, this is what it looks like basically. Um, actually I should take that off battery power, that's good. Is that when you uh, hit the upload button uh, I've got this right. Ah, I know I've done wrong. I need to make so I forgot to mention you've got to go board, uh, select the board type, and then select, select the uh, serial port. That's all good. So, um, and down the bottom you've got a little down the bottom you've got a little console, and when we hit upload, it should compile the compile the sketch. And then, okay, now it's stopped. You can see the lights blinking here to show USB activity, uh, input and output, and then. Um, yeah, all sorts of madness going on. If, uh, if, you, if you upload the Blink sketch, you'd have that little green LED here at Blink. So that's, um, that's what I've got time for in the first session. Um, so actually, 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 there's no break, just move pretty much on to the next session. So does um, anyone have any questions so far? M uh, Mark? Yes. Um, so <coughs> I was using Ico library, and I tried to use it last night yep. with your uh, ID. Um, you, you, you may have used it before I checked in the version that works with 1.0. Right. So. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm actually asleep now. Just my eyes are open. That's why you were there. So Nihal Paul had a version of yours that was fixed. The one you just released today, basically takes over whatever he did. So it's the newest one that works everywhere. The no. What I did was I. Um, uh, I, I, t I tagged the um, ICO library for um, Arduino version 22. So if you want to go, if you want to do pre-10 uh, RDE, just just go back to that tag, and everything now going forward will be for 1.0. Oh, so it's not backwards. Yeah. So you want to keep both. Yep. Exactly. All right. Um, if you've got sort of question, if you've got at this point in time, if you've got questions that complexity, we probably should take them offline or do them a bit later. Has anyone got some more uh, basic questions that you know, anything didn't make sense, or should I just keep going? Okay, I'll just keep going. All right. So what I'd like to do now is just a little bit of a just a, sh a brief code walkthrough to give uh, everyone uh, an idea of what code um, is is uh, used to, to interact with each sensor. So um, just I'll just get past all the comments now. Is that is that visible from the back, or should I make the font larger? Okay, thought that might be the case. All right. So let's see. Would that would that be large enough? Yeah. I'll try. I'll try twenty, twenty-eight, maybe. The code is twice as shiny now. All right. Now, the, the first thing I like to to, to say is, um, uh, I haven't. Uh, whilst I've, this test code works and exercises every piece of hardware on the Pebble, 
um, there are some conflicts and the main conflict is that the, um, the rotary encoder needs to be polled at least a thousand times a second if not more for it to, to work properly when you're um, you know, rotating the knob so to, for it to um, pick up the, the changes in the pulses to, so you can read the encoder. Unfortunately the uh, RGB lead fade handler um, that's a bit of code that I sort of grabbed from Luke and, uh, and it wasn't designed to, to be in ICO. So what it does is it goes off and fades for like, you know, like a second or more and that um, gets in the way. So to um, have the knob work cor correctly, all you've got to do is just comment out, just comment out the, um, the lead fading uh, uh, code. Uh, just stop that event handler and then the knob works. So at the moment, so what I'll do is over the next day or so um, is just uh, slice that code up so it um, actually uh, um, uh, works nicely with the code. Uh, yeah. I wrote something I can give it to you. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, job, job done. Um, yeah, so just um, the, uh, if it, the way, nice thing about Git is people can just fork your project, make it better, issue a pull request, and it's it's great. So yeah, let's let's do that. Um, but we have the URL to download Yeah, sure. I'll go back to that. Definitely. Ooh, that's ugly. Don't know what's happened there. Hang on. What do I want? I want um, keynote. Um, okay. Uh, so the oh actually, the, so the URL will be. Um, oh, is it? Yeah. So the URL is going to be uh, https github.com slash geekscape, and then the the, the the top the it's the top two projects. Uh, uh, Ico, Ico Pebble V2 is the application, the test application, and Ico Arduino is the um, the library. Is that is that is that sufficient to get you going? Yeah. Yeah. So I just uh, is that is that the URL that you wanted? Yeah. Okay. Can I can I? Just for feedback, it's impossible to read. Oh, sorry. Okay, hang on a sec. Oh yeah. yeah it's, it's, yeah. Um, actually, actually, is there, is there any, anyone helping you who, who knows this URL can just walk over and type it in for, for anyone who, who needs it? I mean, there must be about half a dozen people in the room who know. Yeah, got Paul or someone. Yeah. So, if anyone wants to know the URL, so just put your hand up and someone will come around and, and give it to you. I think that'll help. And and someone asked for the uh, slide, uh, a slide, which? So hang on. Uh, which which slide did you want? That one, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We realise that the room's full of uh, the spectrum people who've never done this before to the people who know stacks more than me. So I'm ha we're happy just to go, you know, just answer questions on the fly and then get people to help you out. So, so, so is anyone else who's stuck? Please just put your hand up and someone will come over. Oh, um. No, it's no, no hands. Yeah. And also, if this is not making sense now, we'll, we'll, you know, any, you know, some of us will be happy to be, to be grabbed later and just sit down and do a one-on-one -on -one session with you and get you going. So, um, you know. But, no, we, we won't be here all week because I, I guess there'll be other things happening, but we'll, we'll, we'll make sure... Is this all going away today? Is the entire going away today? Um, I, I, I assume so, but, but you know, we're not, we won't be hard to find, so just come and grab, you know, grab me for a sample. I'm happy to sit down with people one-on-one -on -one and just work through stuff. You know, it's, not, it's not possible to cover everyone's questions in this sort of format, so it's a, a best effort type thing. But this, but, this, but this is more than we've done in previous years. <laughs> All right. Uh, what time have we got? Uh, 1.52. Right. Right. So, I'll just go back to a bit of the code walkthrough. Um, in, this, in the setup function, uh, you, you can see a, a serial begin. That just sets the board rate to 38400 board. And uh, so one of the tricks is that when you, um, when you bring up the serial monitor, 
So, so you can bring up a serial monitor. You need to make sure that the board rate is 38400 board. And uh, one of the things you can see right now is, uh, is that's, mon that's, that's connected the, uh, this window to the to, uh, USB input output of the, uh, of the pebble. And you can see that the pebble is uh, giving the temperature, which is, uh, it claims is 28 degrees at the moment. And if I put my, if I put my finger on the, the temperature sensor, uh, yep, temperature sensor is going up. My question is how accurate that is, because between us two, there's a the degree difference. Ah, uh, we'll have to grab the hardware guys. That's, um, um, that's, a, that's a hardware question. <laughs> <laughs> Duck that one. Uh, look, I think the fact, I think the fact of the matter is, if, uh, like half a degree difference is not is not surprising. Um, I believe also the temperature is um, uh, is a. Uh, based off the uh, analog reference and so if you've got a slight, uh, I think if you have a slightly different analog reference that might make a difference as well I suspect but check, check with a hardware guy. Uh, the, best, the best thing to do in any situation is normally to calibrate it against a known good source and then go from there. Okay, right. So, after, I'll just get rid of this. So after the serial um, port's been set up, you'll see there's this set of event handlers for um, the clock. So up on the top, so once you've uh, got the software running, uh, up in the top right hand corner of the uh, LCD is a little clock, and the clock handler function just looks after that. There's the uh, LCD handler, that, that looks after keeping the rest of the LCD updated, so um, the LCD displays your, the position of the, the rotary encoder, it displays the temperature, it displays the light sensor, so that, that the LCD handler looks after that. The light handler is just a simple function that just gets the uh, current light sensor value. Um, the RGB LED fader does the um, uh, sort of the, the eye candy of the uh, flashing uh, RGB LED. The rotary encoder, you can see this is called every millisecond. So what it's doing is it's, uh, the rotary encoder has two, two pins and as you, as you rotate it, the pins uh, basically go up, up and down in opposition and, and basically by looking at the order in which the pins go up and down, you can tell whether you're rotating left or right in single increments. So that's what the that does. The serial handler, that just looks for, um, uh, for, for you typing on, on the uh, serial monitor. So if I just bring the serial monitor up again, I will go away polycarbonate one. Who are you? So we bring up the serial monitor again. Uh, what, what you can do is, um, if I can hold it up, it's be a bit hard. But if I, if I, whoop, no, lost it. If I type uh, one into the window, um, a little red LED went on. That indicates that relay one went on. And if I type a two into that into that little window up the top and hit send, you'll see the other green LED has gone on. So you can basically, um, that's just demonstrating that uh, input from the PC is controlling the pebble and also that uh, sensors on the pebble are being sent up to the PC. Um, Alright, so that's the, that's, so the serial handler is just looking after serial input. The, uh, there's a the temperature handler which is um, just reading the temperature sensor every thousand milliseconds and that's just uh, writing that out to the serial console under the display. And lastly there's the touch panel handler and that's been called uh, currently four times a second and what that's doing is that's um, putting voltages across the Nintendo, Nintendo touch panel and just determining where your finger is, uh, like a little potential divider and giving those uh, XY values. So that's, ev that's everything that's in the main code. In the, uh, the .h file, the include file, um, are all the all the pin numbers for the hardware? So there's a brief description of the of the, the hardware and the pins and what's on them. So we can see that pin zero and one are the uh, uh, USB uh, input output. But they're also they're also the same pins used for the Zigbee mesh networking. Uh, then pins two through five five are the uh, for the LCD. So how that works is um, is uh, if you um, think, think of wanting, so you want to send eight bit, you want to send eight, a character, eight bits to the LCD. What does it? Say? It send it one bit at a time. So the uh, pin LCD data is what the bit value is. The uh, and the clock and the strobe are then used to um, send that uh, to clock that out one bit at a time to the um, to the uh, to, to the latch, and then it basically strobes and says, right, you've now got eight bits, and that's then sent to the LCD. So what that allows us to do is rather than having to send out all the data in parallel and use a lot, of, a lot of Arduino pins, we can just send it out one, one bit at a time. Pin 5 is the LCD backlight. That's a, what, that uses what's called pulse width modulation to simulate an, an analog value between 0 and 255. And so you can change the, um, the brightness of your, um, of your LCD. And what, what, what I've done is I've, uh, the code, the test code, if you, if you, if you rotate the knob, that'll, uh, that, that changes the LCD backlight value. Pin 6 through 7 are for the, um, the, the rotary encoder, hang on a sec. Um, 
So A, A is one of the inputs and B is the other input. And so um, those are the two inputs that it looks at in opposition to see whether you're rotating left or right. And the rotary push, if you actually, if you push the, you can actually push, you may not have realized this, but you can actually can push the encoder as well. So this, you can actually, you can actually push this and it changes the, um, the word on the display from lowercase to uppercase to show that you've um, pushed it. And the, uh, what, so what you can do with the, so even if you haven't got a touch screen, you can use the rotary knob to, um, you have like a little menu, so you can uh, you rotate to go through the menu values and then push to select and then go in and change values. So, so there's enough, it's minimal, but there's enough input to actually do like a very simple system of um, going through a menu and changing values. And so you might like to, um, uh, have a, temp a temperature set point. So you might say, um, <coughs> I, I want to um, have a, a set point of 25 degrees. So I use the rotary encoder to set that value, hit push that button, and whenever the temperature goes above 25 degrees, your PC gets a message. So you, know, you can just use your imagination to put this the hardware together in different ways. Um, and then, then there's the uh, analog pins. So analog pin zero is your temperature. Analog pin one is the light sensor. The light sensor just gives you a value between zero and 255. Zero is dark and you know, 255 is uh, um, <laughs> so I probably should wear sunglasses. And uh, pin, analog pins two through five are the uh, touch panel. We're going for time. Another um, ten minutes. The, the way the touch panel is, is, is really interesting. It's just a, a, a flat piece of glass with a, a, a membrane on the front which is resistive. And what you, well, the way it works is you put um, f uh, five volts on the top and zero volts on the bottom. And where your finger presses acts like a, basically acts like what's called a potential divider. So you can, but depending upon where your finger is on the on the screen, you can read off on the side. You can read off the voltage. And if it's at five, it means if you read off five, it means your finger's at the top. If you read off zero, it means your finger must be at the bottom. And then once you've read, that gives you the Y coordinate. Then what you do is you put zero volts on the left-hand side, five volts on the right-hand side, and then, then, then you can read off the uh, X value. And you just keep flipping and doing that you know, many times a second. If you want um, you know, have, you know, to have really fine grain, you can obviously sample 10 or 20 times a second, or it's up to you. So it's kind of, kind of cute the way it works. Um, the the, the uh, Nintendo touchscreen I've got is kind of that sort of aspect ratio and the display sort of that aspect ratio. So you could, you could put it on, fr on front. So we've done, we've done uh, I've, I've worked two ways. One is I've put it on front of an LCD so you can um, change the LCD. Like a trackpad. Yeah, like a trackpad. Now the other way you can do is you actually just go and print out, and you, you know, print out a piece of paper this big or just, I'll actually just use a pencil and go you know, on off a little slider and uh, just put that behind the glass and you've made, you've made a, the world's uh, cheapest, nastiest uh, user interface. But you can just then put another bit of paper and you've got a different user interface. It's kind of so anyway, so, that's, uh, that, so let's, uh, let's have a look at a really simple handler. So if we go back to the main code, you'll see there's a handler called the light handler, which is called every thousand milliseconds. If we, if we go to the light handler, we'll see all it does is simply goes light value, analog read the, uh, from the analog pin. So basically calling that function will give you a value between um, uh, 0 and, and 1023 because it's a 10-bit sample. And uh, then the, the uh, va variable light value has just got this number which you can do whatever you want with. You can send it up the serial port, you can put it on the display. It's pretty simple. So that's as simple as it gets. Um, another one that's fairly simple is the temperature sensor. Um, some temperature sensors are digital, so you talk to them with a digital protocol and you get back an answer. Um, things like the uh, Dallas Semiconductor 1 wire sensor. The sensor on the Pebble 2 is very simple. It's just a, it just gives you a, an analog value depending upon how, um, what the temperature is. And uh, you've just got to do a little bit of maths. Um, so what Luke worked out was if you, uh, if, you read the, if, you re if you read the pin and divide by four and subtract 20 and a half, so it sounds like um, uh, sort of some ma uh, magic, uh, magic sprinkles, um, that gives you the temperature value as a floating point number. And then you can um, then you know, once again do whatever you want with it. In this case, I break it into the, the whole portion, the fractional portion, and then put it on the display. One thing to note is um, you know, we normally don't think twice about doing floating point arithmetic. This is an 8-bit microprocessor, and it's got no floating hardware support. So if you um, do a float, it's basically going to suck in a floating point library and take much, much longer than if you're just doing simple um, integer arithmetic. So um, I think you know, we're, so, we're so used to these days of having gigabytes of uh, memory gigahertz of processing power, you've basically got 16 megahertz, so it's, it's executing, oh, give or take, um, you know, 16 million instructions a second, not, not quite, but close enough. It's um, only got eight bits wide data, so if you, if you manipulate a byte, 
and multiply two bytes to get, uh, add two bytes together, that's so much faster than if you're using integers because all of a sudden it's got to you know, do uh, two, uh, tw uh, many more operations. And if you start doing multiplies and divides, it's a lot worse. So um, it's really, really about being frugal. You've got 32K of flash. Um, where, where your programs are stored, which actually it's a little bit less than that because the bootloader takes up some room, but about, about 30k. But you actually can do quite a lot in 30k. So I think all the Pebble code at the moment, talking to all the hardware, um, actually I'll find, uh, if you look at the screen, it's actually around nine, 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 8 or 9k at the moment? 9k at the moment, including the bootloaders. Uh, so, uh, sorry, so you've got about uh, about 20k left to do stuff. But you've only got 2k of RAM, so that's used for your heap and your stack. So um, you've got to watch out for that. And one thing I've done at the, um, up in uh, the start of the program, see, a, see it says print, oh, see it says print free RAM there? That causes a little function that determines how much RAM you've got free. So it's handy to, you know, to do that to make sure you, your, your stack and your heap haven't collided. So um, every time you do a function call, it uses a bit of stack. Every time you um, allocate a variable, it uses a bit of heap. Um, yeah, sorry. So um, I saw some code that would print at compile time how much was used, how much of S-RAM was used as yep. a warning when you go too high, your strings are too long or whatever. Was that ever integrated or there's still nothing in the ID that does that? Um, I, not, not that I know of. I think, it's, I think it's still people doing third party efforts as far as I'm aware. So, um, yeah, you have to do it by hand after the fact, yeah. after you spend yeah. hours yeah. But basically, you're working on the bare metal here. You talk, you're pretty much, the C code you write, there's no operating system, there's nothing between you, and there's no safety bolts or airbags. It's, um, you know, if you use up memory or something like that, it's just things just mysteriously stop or go weird on you, which is, which is fun. Um, it's, anyway, so um, how much time have we got? Uh, about enough. Yeah. That, so uh, I won't go into it now, but one trick you can do is if you start using lots of strings and lots of big messages, what you can do is rather than having those consume RAM, which is very valuable, you've only got 2K, you can also, um, you can, there's a, a, a macro you can use to um, put that into, into Flash, and so it's kind of uh, efficient. So, so there's all these sort of tricks you can use. Um, the other thing you've got is um, uh, 512 bytes of EEPROM. Uh, EEPROM is a memory that um, is, uh, is still... Um, it's preserved when you power cycle the device. So if you turn the device off and turn it back on again, the EEPROM values are the same. So you can use that for, if you want to have a temperature set point, you could um, store that into EEPROM. There's a little function that does that for you. And then when you turn the device on again, you have to change the set point all the time. It's just there for you. So they're, 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 there's qu quite a lot in these little devices. They're, they're very clever. Um, all right, so, so let's see what else is useful. Um, I'll, I'll go to... I'll go to one of the, pretty much one of the more complicated things, which is the LCD um, code. That's quite lot. Uh, so up the top of the LCD code, I'll just make a bit more space. Uh, there's a little bit of ASCII art to show you how the uh, microprocessor is connected to the shift register and then connected to the display. So people who are interested can look a little bit more about how that works. And and so the code in this. The code in this uh, module is broken into two parts. There's a low-level code that does all the, all the work, shoveling the bits around, um, and, and probably most people won't be interested in that. So that's at the, that's at the top. But if you, so, if, so things like LCD setup and LCD initialize. But if you go down further and further, you'll find there's methods like LCD position, LCD write number, and LCD string. And those are the things you'll use to basically go LCD position, X coordinate, Y coordinate, LCD write string, LCD write number. And, they, and that so allows you to um, take a temperature value and write it on the LCD at a certain position. Um, but you know, there's, it's not a graphical display, so you've got to make sure that you, you, know, you, you clear the, you know, the clear, clear space after you. You've got to worry about refresh rates. Um, refreshing about 10 times a second is pretty good. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't um, consume all the processor, and yet it doesn't appear to flicker too much. And so yeah, there's lots of, um, you know, it's, it's challenging in a different way. Um, look, there's so much more I could talk about, but I'm probably running, running out of time. Uh, John or anyone, is there anything I should have covered that I haven't? Yeah. yeah look, it's, it's very, very difficult to get, you know, if you've never seen this before, to get you across all this. Um, uh, but we're, we'll be around all week to help out. And you can start, you start with blinking a light and then you basically then you know, press the button and the light blinks when you press the button. You just work up in baby steps and uh, and you know, so it's all good. And everything you learn here is directly applicable to the to the Leo to the Leo stick. So um, if you if you know how to blink a light on the pebble, you know how to, to basically blink the uh, RGB LED here. And if you know how to blink it in red, 
you just replicate that two or three more times and you can then blink it in blue and green and then start, you know, all the colours of the rainbow. The Piezo uh, library, uh, sorry, the Piezo hardware, sorry. Um, in the Arduino um, library, there's this thing called Tone, and it's very tempting to use Tone and start getting out the Close Encounters theme or, or whatever your favourite music is. Please don't do that because it um, breaks it breaks the USB library at the moment. Um, this is a, is a, this is a bleeding edge device, and so there's things like that. But what you can do though is if you, if you toggle the output pin at the right rates, so if you toggle it for, uh, 440 times a second, you'll get a, a, an A. And if you toggle a bit faster, you, know, you can basically make your own music by just toggling the bits at the right the right rate. So, um, so that's how you play music on this thing. Is, this pin on a, is it a PWM pin or is it just a standard digital? Yeah. Pretty much every question you ask will be a simple answer, but the real answer will be more complex. <laughs> so when you say future release, that's future well, release of the IDE of the IDE, compiler? Yeah. 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 The tone library is um, upsetting the timer that's been called for the USB service. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know if you can call it on that. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what we just heard? Yeah. yeah okay. Oh, cool. So awesome. All right. So, so, so um, I'd like to finish with a couple of things. Um, uh, firstly, uh, if I um, manage to get time and everything else, I'd like to put a little, place, a little bit of infrastructure to help people use their Leo stick, because uh, not everyone's going to want to um, dive down the depths of the Arduino code. So if I get my head around that, I'll try and get something up in the next day or so, so that people can um, do some more interesting things. Uh, but basically, get you. You know, it's, uh, it's great to flash, flash a light, but the, the novelty wears off. What's really cool is to be able to you know, use its inputs, have that to go to your PC, and have that go out to the network, and then have people's Leo sticks talk to other pe people's Leo sticks, or those sort of things. All this stuff is possible, just a bit of imagination infrastructure, so we'll try and help people out with that if we can. The other thing I want to quickly say is, um, uh, two years ago, this is what the first version of Pebble looked like, and now you've got something that's much more, much more refined. But you know, there's a bit of clear heritage, and uh, hopefully over time we'll keep uh, improving these things. So it might be Pebble V3, V3 in a couple of years, or a better version of the other kit. So it's really interesting to see the capabilities of the community um, get better in terms of the manufacture of uh, the hardware and the design. I just wish I was, you know, we're doing as well in the software, but we're getting there. Um, what is the other thing I want to show? Um, there's also people here who are playing with um, a thing called the USB droid. Um, it's, it's, an, it's an Arduino that basically allows you to connect your Android device to, to an Arduino on the hardware. And so um, guys like Philip Lindsay you know, and John is doing a talk about um, uh, basically being able to do a little, um, you know, Android application that basically you know, press buttons and it changes inputs and outputs on your Arduino or, or sliders and things like that. So you know, connecting your Android devices to your, to your Arduino and, um, and also, uh, so also I start starting to play with things like open source routers where, where basically you can take a, an open source hardware router and then that's another, that's another Arduino that Luke's designed um, with, that does current sensing. So that's just basically hooks directly to the router. So, so when you see the Leo stick, you see this little, uh, what looks like a little, little limited device is hooks in the side of your PC. This is really just the start of, you know, of doing a, an awful lot more. So um, yeah, hopefully we'll have inspired some people to uh, you know, get stuck in and do some very cool things. So I think that's about, I think that's about it. So, so I'd like to thank John and Mark and uh, uh, who've you know, done it, and, and Luke for the design who's done a superb job pulling us together and also everyone who helped today from the hacker space and from uh, if people have come from Adelaide and people have come from Perth. Um, they, uh, the Perth guys helped us out in the Maker Fair so I'd just like to give these guys a round of applause for doing another great job. And, uh, and thank everyone for making this. Oh, it's been an awesome day, so thank you. Thanks, Andy.